My name is Connor Cunningham. Welcome to Coaching the Coaches, episode seven. My background is in GAA, but I have a lot of I have um, a lot of experience in hurling and football. But I've also played uh, with Gaelic football. I've also played football uh, amongst all other sports. But I have a severe interest in football. Uh, and I have a severe interest in other sports such as ice hockey, um, you know, athletics and what have you. Um, this series is all about a wee bit more feedback and a wee bit more information for novice coaches to take with them to create their own philosophies and then to adapt on them in the next number of weeks. As we've been doing in the last two episodes, sort of giving a wee bit more meat to the bones about formations and about different things. If anyone has any questions, they can always have, get me on Twitter. Uh, it's at Coaches Codes. Um, it's and then it's at YouTube. So it is um, Connor Cunningham and my name um, itself. So. This week we're going to be talking about not overcomplicating things uh, and movement. Um, first one is I've mentioned this a couple of times on the on the series so far, but try not to overcomplicate things. Um, let's say to have a real minimalist approach to the putting out cones. But also have a real minimalist code um, point for creating stations. You know, um, the the type of training session, like I say, I always try and have five five drills. You know, your warm up, your cool down, and have like sort of striking or shooting drill, and then have maybe something you've worked on or something you've noticed from the match before. It's one of your slots. And then the second one would be something just general like passing or sort of build, trying to create confidence with building play. Um, they would be my five main. I, I would recommend that. That's a good hour, maybe hour and a quarter of training. You know, your five or ten minutes for your warm-up and your cool-down. A lot of coaches sometimes forget about the cool-down. No matter what age group it is, it is important that you do it, and it is important that they get into the philosophy of doing it. Um, that's that's already twenty minutes of your session gone. If you have an hour, as we would here in Ireland, to train your team, you know you've already got a third of it gone, and you haven't even done anything. That's why, as I say, I would give me forty minutes. I would try and do about fifteen minutes of shooting, and so that gives me twenty five minutes. So basically. Three fifteens basically. Now, the players will insist on one of them being a match, and that's fine. But I would try and avoid that. I maybe two or the three sessions do a match because you will learn more in a match. But the only problem with a match is there's only ever one player with the ball at any one time. That that's a given, and sometimes there's zero at that very moment with the ball. So, um, it's not. It's not effective for weaker players to play in a match because they'll just stand off and then you're you're not really that's why in terms of overcomplicating things I would always insist on you the coach to decide you the coach decide the teams that the matches because if the uh, you know my experience with children under 15 they will try and make it a bullying session especially here in Ireland, they will say, yes, us three are together um, and you're you're not allowed to come with us. You're not good enough for us. Or, can't believe we're getting, we're stuck with him. And, you know, you're sitting there going, that's your teammate. Like, that's meant to be someone who's around your age that you're going to grow up with together. You're from the same place. That's around only six or 7,000 um, people. So they're from the same place. It'd be nice to get on, but you don't have enough time in your hour every week to teach them philosophy. You have to try and teach them the game that you're studying 
and the game that they're still in. So that's sort of where overcomplicating things comes into it too. You're not a, you know, I've mentioned this before on, on the, the channel, you're not a primary school teacher, you're not a principal. Your job is to make sure that whenever they walk in the gate, and whenever they walk out of the gate, that they, you have control. And that doesn't mean iron fist, ready to, ready to just throw digs at anybody. That just means of letting them, keep it on top of them, keep it on top of them. But that's why I would say, if you're doing a drill, as I mentioned last week or over the over the last couple of weeks, do a run through. No matter what age group it is, do a run through. Um, the in terms of your drills, I would keep them to a minimum. I would keep, I would, I always try and make my drills have three, three sets, three groups. All right, so. There you go. I have three, three, I always try to split them into three. So if I have 18, you have six, six in each group, right? So you'd have, say you're having a shooting drill, you'd have six here at the start cone. I always try and put in a middle section because in Hurling and Gaelic, it, it, you'll never, you will never run faster than a ball. Now that is a given. A ball will always be quicker than you. So why not move it? So I'd always have a wee shooting drill where you're passing it to this man or lady. You're receiving the ball back over the bar. He goes to here. Then the person up here, this guy runs on. He comes, this guy comes to here. Pucks the ball back. So basically what you're doing there is saving time. Because this guy here wins, gets the ball, right? Once the ball goes over the bar, which we hope it will do from about 30 or 40 yards, he gets the ball, he pucks it down to here because it starts here, he joins the back of the queue. So what are you doing there? You're creating a circle. Because you see if it, there was nobody back here, before you know it, all the balls are here. He's standing, scratching himself. He's standing, picking his nose. And they're all saying, where's the balls? Where's the balls? And you're going, where are they? Where did you hit them? I seen you have a shot there. Where did it go? Oh, uh, I went over the bar, but I didn't go after it because I didn't know what was happening. And you're going, you know fine well what's happening. You know fine well what's happening. But with something like this, it's so much easier to adapt because you're shooting, you're not, you're saving time. Also, this player here, you get him to solo it, kick a couple of toe taps, and then kick it down here. This guy here is learning. This guy here is learning his catching. He's learning his hand pass. He's learning how to put feed it off at the right time. He's learning about coordination. He's learning about starting the play and putting it over the bar kicking it, you know, find your range, put it over the bar. That's a simple drill. It keeps it running, and that's what I mean by overcomplicating things. As long as you have, if you have three groups, to always try to use them so that they're, you, they're always moving. The last thing you want, all right, is this here, this guy here, run up here, kick it over the bar, run and grab the ball back around, right? That waste, that takes so much time, but all he's learning is kicking it. Now, fair enough, if you don't kick it over the bar, you, you know, you're going to be worse off. But he's not learning anything. He's not learning anything, really. He needs to kick a pass. He needs to run after it. He needs to build up his pace. He needs to get a wee bit of three-quarter line, or three-quarter pace. And then over the bar, if he's a good player or he's somebody who wants to learn, encourage him to use their weaker side, go over and put it over their left, put it over their right go as close to the can to they're, they're happy with how to put it over that's the sort of drill that is simple it's used it's effective 
and you are asking players to do things without them knowing. And that's what I'm talking about whenever I mean um, don't overcomplicate it. Don't try and, you know, as I say, I'm sure I've been guilty of it too. You know, you sit and you go to coaching courses and you literally, you literally see a great drill well well organized because you are in because you are in a a coaching mentality session right you're standing with people who want to learn and who have a good head start on the novice which it's going to be a lot of people that are watching this and they they are not going to know what that group will know a parent if you pick a parent out and you say go set up that drill. It would have to be fair and handy. But that's not that's not begrudging the parent. That's just they're not they're not in that mindset. And that's and that's what you need to bear in mind. You have to think like your audience. Your audience, you need to be as simple as that. You know, if as I say, whenever I'm working with um Whenever I'm working with the Special Olympics, the Downpatrick team, I I was given the mantra by the head coach to get them fitter. So what I started doing with them because of a lot of them have very diff- have regular or different challenges. So in my opinion, it has to be in a middling area where the talent ones won't feel bored, but the weaker ones won't feel um, neglected or left out. Um, so we would do things with the ball. We would do things sprinting. We would do things turning, twisting. But we would do things that are fun. You know, we would do things that... I've seen it myself. And this way it's very important. What is it? This is why it's very important to keep it simple. You know, there was one... See, Aye, episode four. Sorry, sorry about that. There, I have a episode board there, but episode four was the one not overthinking. This is very similar to it, but it's not in a way because not overthinking is is sort of similar to it, but it's not. This here's don't overcomplicate. Once you the not overthinking was to give you that feedback, but not overcomplicate is about the drills about the training, about the sessions. Because if I went out and tried to do I remember one one time I seen Rondons in the I was watching a lot of YouTube videos about them. They're amazing. They're amazing. Now let me just show you here. This is what a rondon is, right? There's a players, there's, there's in this one, there's eight players, right? They're around the outside, and there's one player in the middle. Sometimes there can be two. There's one ball, and it's the job of the two players in the middle to win the ball back off the eight players. Now, as I say, a lot of sometimes the players can be static. Sometimes it can work in the defender's favor. Sometimes it can work in the attacker's favor. But it, what that there does is make you think under pressure, makes you always think maybe two two passes ahead. It helps the defenders to work as a team. It it's a great drill for fitness. It's a great drill for 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 using your your brain brain in um, in match situations. It's great for. <laughs> like I say, it's great for keeping your head up whenever you're whenever you're you playing the ball. It's it's great for a lot of things. But I tried to do that with my special needs team. Now the problem with that was that they didn't really understand what I was asking them to do. So some of them, God help them, were playing very slow and they were always losing the ball. And in them sort of in them sort of drills, whoever loses the ball goes into the middle and so on and that's what the incentive is of the two defenders to win the ball to 
progress and then to get off and get a rest you know that's the whole idea and then obviously if, if one player is in if one player is in for too long then that can move on and uh, switch it but that's their problem if the player's in too long so that's what the thing is but they they struggle with it and i had i overthought it i thought that i was going in to see the harlem globe daughters and i wasn't i was going to people who do recreation football on a friday night and there's eight players that play every saturday every one saturday month I need to know my audience. I need to know these players are coming. They want to play matches. They want to play football. They enjoy the game. And they are understanding of where they are in that game. And I need to understand that as well. I need to get them in the fast touch. I need to get them playing the one first time. I need to give them a bur a ball. Give them a bye ball when they need it. But also give them a wee encouragement when they need it too. Um, because you, if you don't know your audience, then you're going to overcomplicate it. Because you are not the... You could know a thousand drills. You could know ten thousand drills. But if you're taking under sixes, you're not going to show them how to play two touch and then get their shot away. You know, you, you'll be safer. You'll be safer, you know, explaining to them, you know, a Ma's equation. Because they'll look at you like you're 50 head. And that's where the, the thing is, your knowledge is very important, but it's only important if you use it correctly. And that's very important to, to hear. And I want to say that again, your knowledge is very important, but it's only important if you use it correctly. You know, there's no point in you. Um, I was watching a thing there today about you on YouTube about Adidas and Puma. I'm going to be bringing it up in work tomorrow, throwing a few facts out there about the two brothers, Dazzler, who started. But there's no point, there's no point in me telling my wife about that because she probably doesn't know Puma or Adidas. She probably knows Adidas, but so I'd be safer talking to like minded friends who are probably more interested in it. And that's not. But other than her, that's just saying that you need to know your audience. You know, I and that's and that's why not that's the same in coaching. The exact same in coaching. So that's that's one point I want to get over. The next one is movement. It's very important as a coach, right? That whenever you do a drill of any kind, in any sport, in basketball, in ice hockey, in field hockey, in hurling, in Gaelic football, in football itself, in badminton, anything. It's very important that when you move the ball, you move. When you pass the ball, that you move to somewhere else. You see, if you are striking a ball or you're kicking a ball and you're just standing still, unless you're a goalkeeper, which who does move as well, but doesn't move to the same pace and what have you. You are going, not going to do anything. You have to move. You have to get it into your psyche that you have to move. It, in Gaelic games, you have to move and play the ball on the run. You have to play the ball as you're running. You have to move the ball in situ. If you can't do them things, you're going to struggle. And you need to set that up in your training, in your drills, because I was watching a wee bit of Liverpool last night and they do it perfectly. But you see, I just want to explain this here. I want to, I want to explain it in a, in a football, soccer way, if you know what I'm saying. It says Liverpool play 4-3-3, so I'll just do it as a game because I'm matching them. This 
is why movement is so important, okay? So, you, if Keita or Henderson or Fabinho, right, when they have the ball, right, they are one-on-one. -on -one. The four defenders here are against three attackers, right? The three defender forwards here are against four defenders, right? So, in theory, this... There shouldn't really be, if, if that game was played the way them players are standing right now and they only kicked it and moved, that game would be nil-nil every day of the year. Because there's four defenders here, there's three forwards. There's three and three, so them two, they nearly, nearly nullify each other. Then there's three and four. The reason this is a great formation that is is because of movement you see the this is what i mean you see this here salah here or firmino or Mane, right if the ball is played to Mane, these two players here have a difficult decision to make does this boy here right for brighton does he pick up firmino and let Mane go one-on-one -on -one here or does he shuttle across and then does he does he shuttle across and pay it two on one, leaving it one on one in the front of the goal? Right? No. Let's add now we factor to this here, right? If Keita comes into this space, right? Salazar, Firmino. Mane, Keita comes in here. Suddenly it's four on four. Now this player will obviously come back and make it five on four. But if he's here, right, this player here, because of the movement of him, he doesn't even have to have the ball to take to dictate to this man. All right. This is why a movement is so important. Even if they think that they're not going to win the ball, it's hard to explain this to underage children. But you see if you your midfielder can move into space, even if he knows he's not going to get the ball, which is very selfless of him, he is going to create space. Because this guy here doesn't know. Right? Where does he go? Does he pick up Salah? Who most likely the ball is going to go out to? Does he pick up Firmino? Does he go straight towards the ball and leave this gap here? Suddenly, Keita, right, who has already played the ball, the ball is here. Apologies. Now, the ball is here, right? Beside Manny. Now, this guy can come across. And leave Robertson to come up and down here. Or he can go one on one, right? So what I'm saying is this kid has moved in here. Now Firmino's gonna go forward, right? And make a two on one here. But this guy, this defender, is not aware of where he's go. And that's only from Keita's movement, because if Firmino moves here. And this, this player gets drawn away. Or this player gets drawn away. It frees up space for him. But the fact that he's moved here. He's made the defender think. And when you think it's not intrusive. It's actually going to be. You're actually going to get that split second. To get the chance. Or to get the score. And to, to influence the match. Now he might do that run. 20 times in a match. And it only takes that once to win the goal, to put to score the goal. Because this is why movement is so important and you need to teach your midfielders and not so much your defenders, but your midfielders and your forwards that they have to keep moving all the time and they have to make opportunities for their teammate. You know, the likes of Keita there, I was thinking about it the last night, he's not going to get an assist. He's not going to get a goal. Now, there could be times when the ball bounces out and he can drill it and score. 
or Dill and get an assist. But see, most likely in that situation, he's not going to get an assist. He's not going to get anything. And nobody's going to be saying, and everybody's going to be saying, I think he had an alright game. He didn't. He influenced space. He influenced space. And that is something that you can teach and you have to teach them. Whenever they play the ball, especially out wide, that they have to try and get in and make the defender think. Because all it takes is, is somebody there to influence the defender into overthinking, like we've been doing in these drills. So that that's why if I was doing a training session for that, This is what I would do. Start here with the ball. I would insist that the player first passes. He'll do three or four runs of this, but he'll pass it out wide to the one of the wide players. Then he sprints. He, this is like a 10 yard sprint into here. Maybe pass it off to Firmino or pass it off to the opposition, opposing play, right? And then get behind again. And they get the shot away. Then suddenly, then they'll ha you would have your three groups here. You'd have one group here, one behind the goal, and your three across here. So if you had your six, if you had your six, this is what you do. You have six here, six behind the goals. Pass it to him. Sprint here. Got the ball. Make sure you get a good pass away. If you're going to sprint into that space, you have to be able to, to adapt. Pass it off here. One of these players get, gets the ball and gets the shot away. Person behind the goals then goes to... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. This guy goes to here. To here a shot goes behind the goals. That guy goes to the top. All right. And the whole point of this is to get that sprint in. To get... The defender to be influenced by your four against three, which is exactly what's happening here. Movement is so important. You have to, you have to every single training session, every single drill, you have to bring movement into it. Because if you let children or young adults kick the ball, wait, get a ball, kick a ball, wait. In a match, whenever there's a man running. Whenever they can't kick it on the run or they have to turn to one side or they have to change their body, that's from practice. That's from bad practice. That's not from Ockeyes, Seamus. He just couldn't do it today. That's just, he had to turn on to his right-hand side. He had to kick from his right. He had to absolutely post it that he was going to do that. And when you do things like that, there, you are leaving yourself open to counterattack. You're also leaving yourself open to nullifying that threat. That's why you have to do it on the run. He has to keep moving. He has to be engaged and he has to be switched on. And how you do that is through your drills in training. So this, by the way, is a Monaghan GAA County jersey. Really nice jersey. Monaghan's in Ulster, uh, beside the county that I'm from down. It's not far from down. Um, I'm going to start wearing a few more of these jerseys because I think the other teachers look a bit bland. So if you like what you hear, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, uh, follow me on Coaches Codes. Coaching Codes, sorry, at Coaches Codes. Co at Coaching Codes on Twitter. I'm not on Facebook. Um, and as I say, I'm really enjoying the session and I think a lot of people seem to be enjoying them too. So thank you very much. And I will see you all next week where we'll be discussing, as I'll say, uh, phases. All oh, right. Where we will be discussing phases of play and we'll also be discussing encouragement in training and matches. All right. So bye-bye.